do a demonstration this morning of uh, some very uh, simple suture techniques. First, showing a two handed square knot. Um, it's a very basic knot that's used in the operating room. It's important to use a square knot because square knots don't slip. Uh, we call them square knots in the operating room. Officially, in knot books, uh, what I will show you and call a square knot is officially known as a reef knot, not a square knot, but in the operating room uh, and among surgeons you're going to hear this described as being a square knot. Um, again, the advantage of the square knot is it's got uh, a very good uh, breaking strength and the most important thing is that this knot will not slip once properly tied. So this is a knot, basic knot tying uh, practice board. It's provided by one of the suture companies, the name of which we've covered up to keep this a non-commercial video. Um, but it's very handy to use. You can practice on these. They're available in the medical school. They're available in all the different hospitals. Or you can just practice uh, on a button on your shirt or you can practice on a chair arm or anything else you can practice your knots. So the, uh, the basic square knot um, has a couple of important elements. First, what we want to do is create a loop in the suture. Well, we can do that easily with this big heavy cord this way, but if you're using flimsy suture material, you can't do it like this. What we have to do is create a loop over our finger this way and there is a loop. So we're going to create a loop over the finger. Now our next task is to pass this strand around this strand to create our first knot. And the way we're going to do that is to pinch the thumb and forefinger together, pass those under the loop we've created, then lay the strand from our left hand across the thumb of our right hand, pinch that strand, and use that to convey that left hand strand back under and through the loop. Now we've got our first half hitch, and we'll take that down to the knot tying board. Now we want to create another loop, but in the end we want the strands to, uh, at the end of this throw, we want the strands to end up in opposite directions. So we have to create the loop a little bit differently. This time we're going to use the thumb to catch this strand coming up, create our loop here. Once again, pinch thumb and forefinger together, pass that through the loop, and use that to grasp the string that's in our left hand and pass it back through the loop like that. And when we take that down, we have a square knot. And in this square knot, you'll see that we have a loop across the top, and both strands come under that loop. If you flip this knot over, you'll find exactly the mirror image with a loop down at the bottom and both of these strands coming out. I guess one thing that I should point out is that this strand needs to be grasped with your uh, fourth and fifth fingers up against the palm to give tension on this strand. So we're going to pick this up with our finger. Bring the left hand string over the finger to create a loop. Pinch thumb and forefinger together 
pass that under. Lay the left hand strand across the thumb. Pinch thumb and forefinger together to use to convey that strand through the loop. And here goes another flat knot. And actually, if you look very closely, you'll see that in conjunction with the second throw of our first square knot, we've now created another square knot. So now we've given a little introduction to knot tying, and if you've been um, if you've been tying some of these as we've done this, you found that it's probably not as easy as it looks. Of course, the way for any technical skill to become easy is practice, repetition, repetition, repetition. There's one very important thing about learning to tie knots, and it applies to all kinds of technical skills. That is that Practice makes perfect, but imperfect practice makes for imperfect results. So as you're, as you're tying your knots uh, around your bedpost, around your chair arm, around your button off your jacket, take the time to look at your knots and make sure that they're going down correctly. What you don't want to do is develop bad habits by imperfect practice. If you uh, practice imperfectly over and over again and ingrain bad habits, it'll be very difficult for you to break those habits. So especially early on, carefully check every knot. Use large enough suture material so that you can actually see the result of your knot. If you're using very fine suture materials, you can't see what's going down. So Bite the bullet, swallow your pride, use large materials to practice your knots initially until you know that you're getting the right motion each and every time. Then you can move to smaller and smaller suture materials to practice your knots. And have fun. We look forward to seeing you on surgery rotations in the future. And you can dazzle us with your knot tying abilities.